Hello, Carla Hartley here. We are going to be continuing our discussion of the factors a court must consider when a parent of a minor child asks permission to move away from the area with that child. All right, today we are at factor seven. This is again my arbitrary numbering schedule for these things to help organize this series. Factor seven is going to be something that is, is going to be a little bit hard for people to grasp, but one factor that the court must, must consider, just as with all the other factors, when deciding to permit or not permit a parent to move away from the jurisdictional area with a minor child, is the relationship between the parents. Yes, I said the relationship between the parents. Are these parents able to co-parent? Are they able to make decisions um, for the best interest of that child? Are they able to have civil discussions? Now, oddly, you would tend to think that parents who absolutely cannot, cannot, cannot get along, the court would want to kind of send them to opposite coasts, but it's, it's sort of the opposite. One of the factors that the court is going to be looking for, and this is in a lot of case law, is when a parent applies to move away, is that parent likely to foster the other parent's continuing relationship with the child? There you go. Now, here's the conundrum that the move away parent finds themselves in. If they have not been making efforts to co-parent during the past few years, then you have a problem where we've got a, a history where it's going to look like, oh, maybe you haven't been co-parenting then and you're suddenly trying now. So what is the philosophy behind expecting parents to find a way to get along for the sake of their children? The philosophy is, is pretty, pretty simple. That child is half you and half the other parent. Granted, you and the other parent are no longer together, but your, your kid knows that that child is half dad and half mom, and half mom and half dad. And if you, if one parent is slamming the other parent in the presence of the child, or by expression and tone and talking to friends, not even saying bad things to the child, but just letting it be very aware that this parent cannot stand the other person. This is informing the child that half of that child is, is not loved. That, that half of that child is being rejected. Now, I'm not going to get into all of the child psychology and the studies that have been done and so on and so forth. I'm trying to, to plain language this. But that's how the courts really see it. It's not a point to argue about at this, at this juncture. What you need to know is the court is going to look at this and say, is this parent who is seeking to move away likely to foster the relationship with the other parent? If I let this parent move 3,000 miles away, what's going to happen to visitation? Are they going to interfere with telephone contact? Are they going to interfere with video visits? Or are they going to be cooperative and try to foster these relationships? And you see what I'm saying? Now, if, if the parent who's not wanting to move away is, is the, shall we say, the obstreperous parent then, or the belligerent parent, then we, we have a different dynamic. Obviously, what the court is hoping for is that we have two parents that are getting along well so that the impact of a move away is going to be minimized on the child. Don't forget, there is detriment, whether there's sufficient detriment to trigger that, that early factor we were talking about, there is detriment to a child when the parents move away. There's detriment to a child when the parents simply break up because the child is part of that breakup the child will take on responsibility for the breakup in many, in many instances. There's, there's a lot of stuff going on in these small people's minds. So the court's interest is to minimize, minimize the child's guilt in that. And when it comes to, when it comes to looking at a move away, it's to try to minimize the detriment to the child. I hope this has been helpful. I hope this will encourage you, whether you're planning a move away soon or not, to start working towards co-parenting with the other party. 
There are a number of good resources to help you find ways to co-parent. There are co-parenting courses that are offered online by a number of reputable places. Even if you're not in the jurisdiction where I practice, look up your local court website and, and see what are that court, that jurisdiction's acceptable co-parenting classes. This will help you a lot in assisting your child and not thinking one of you hates half of that child. It'll also help you when it comes time to, to try to get your move away granted. I hope this has been helpful. It's been a little bit of a difficult topic and I know I have been way too brief, but have a good day. Bye.